Hi, my name is Hani Ogundei, and this is Analyze This, and I'm with my co-host, the delectable Tunji Andrews. And today we're going to be chatting about Made in Nigeria. So Made in Nigeria has gone through different periods. First, it was like really cool, then it wasn't cool, then it was cool again, then it's not cool, maybe it's cool. So today we're going to be breaking it down and analyzing this. Um, is it a fad? Is it here to stay? What exactly is the process of why we're all back to loving Made in Nigeria? I'm super excited to be talking about this because I'm really passionate about Made in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, you, what do you think? Is it like, was this something, why was I, it like I mean, cool before? Um, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure I was alive when it was cool, wow. but, um, okay, yes, apart from the days of, um, like, remember Cortina, the days of the music, or you know, Cortina, Cortina yeah. it used to be really cool, yeah. you know, the shoes, it was cool to have that. Uh, but then in terms of music, uh, there was a time when it was, you go to any party, you would not hear any Nigerian music. Yeah, back in uh, the days the, of Rick D. Yeah, and all I'm that. telling you. But then we had uh, Plantation Boys, you know, Showing uh, your Remedies. Age. Yes. Some of us just picked up like Davido's time, but. Yeah. 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 But also there was the movies too. Living in yes. Bondage, you know, broke the scene and made everybody kind of interested in Nigerian movies. But then it started to get and the better. Series. Started to get yeah. better. Yeah. Um, things like Checkmate. Ripple. Uh, Ripple. So, it, I mean, we've come a long way with, you know, building the whole Made in Nigeria context. Um, I mean, it's, it's been a while now. I mean, uh, the music has now become official. In no, fact, the music if, you go has to blown. A, if you go to a party and you're hearing foreign music, it's almost like... It's really TV, strange, right? Yeah. Like, so, we, and now we have a collection of music. You can actually fill your uh, music um, instruments, Famous. whatever, with Nigerian music. And that is really cool. Yeah, I remember like when I was going to school, when my dad would go out buy like, you know, when you take, get a trip to shops to go out mm -hmm. buy the shoes. So it's, it's really interesting seeing like the whole process. And then there was a whole time where nobody wanted me in Nigeria. Like yeah. when I was in secondary school, mm -hmm. the thing was you had to come back with your cardigan and no. your pop stuff from Max Spencer's or you were not cool. Like cool. you were, in fact, don't bother going back to school. Um, but it's really exciting to see like it come back in a big way. I think that the culture, especially with music mm -hmm. and, and Nollywood has had a big part to play in that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's really interesting to see it catch on even now with businesses, like people really building businesses around like made in Nigeria um you know ABBA is like a really interesting case study true, for me true. right like because they've been producing like in ABBA for generations but then the thing is they always used to stamp it with like yeah made in Italy they put the color and say made in Slovenia even though it was made by a lovely Mr. Mm -hmm. Nambi singing somewhere mm -hmm. in ABBA but that's because we as Nigerians didn't always like like made in Nigeria we always felt like something coming from abroad is better and I know that that still kind of is that attitude still kind of persuades today. So, like, how do we change it? How do we make a break from that? I, I don't know how we possibly can because even the Abba you were talking about. I mean, I've, I've been speaking with uh, some of the governor's aides well, in, in Abia. No, it's not that serious. Um, and generally, the issue with Abba is that you find a lot of sustenance uh, yeah, manufacturing. Players, so right? they're very skilled, very good at what they're doing, but they're yeah. very small scale. So yeah. you can't possibly go to a bar and, I mean, you can. Yeah. Uh, you want to have 5,000 bags made, for instance. But what will happen is that you have a lot You'll of them. You'll have to give it to like 100 guys you know, to make, to make like it. 5, and then the challenge is to have the same standard, the same yeah. treading. So, but what Abba needs, and I mean, Industry we in need Nigeria. Standardization. standardization, a lot of money, but there's a standard organization of Nigeria. I there think they are trying board. to do it. How do you know all these things? I, it's, you well, just study them in your free time. Cool, okay. But it, mm. Anyway, standardization is like a really important key thing. Like, I mean, I have to say, like for my in, like for my industry, like in fashion and technology, like mm -hmm. for me, we used to buy and sell as well. Yeah. But then when like the foreign exchange hit, yeah. you know, like when me and Dollar used to hang out together with yeah, friends, we're I used friends to touch them. No, then no Dollar problem. just started flying far away, and I was like, okay, we can't continue like this. So mm -hmm. we moved on to manufacturing. We started manufacturing um, the clothes here. So like everything I'm wearing today now is made in Nigeria. And mm. this your suit as well is like looks like a great made in Nigeria. Yeah, brand. it is actually. Yeah, I, I was I was pretty surprised. I mean, I, I there's a there's a patent shoe I have which is made by a Nigerian brand. I yeah. don't want to call his name, um, but it's it was surprising because I, I'm not really big on names. But someone asked me, "Oh, I like your patent shoes. What, who made it?" And I had to take it off. And in my mind, I was thinking to see some Giorgio Armani or something because it was pretty pricey. We're hoping to see Giorgio Armani. You know, it was pretty pricey. Right. But then I saw ah. I was like, ah, what's, what's going Nigeria? on? Made in Nigeria. Yeah, you know? I think that what's super exciting is that 
there are some made in Nigeria brands now that are making the same like mm-hmm. quality, high exactly, quality, exactly. globally competitive products. Um, and that is like super exciting. But I think the final milestone is getting Nigerians or getting even Africans to accept that made in Nigeria can come out of here and it can be really good and it can be at mm-hmm. par with like, you know, your Jojo Armani shoe that mm-hmm. you were mm-hmm. hoping for. Um, and I think that's really where we see the big challenge because people always feel like made in Nigeria always means inferior or cheap. Or cheap. And that's not the case. And I think that that's the next big wave of consumer. Especially, that exactly, in consumer. Pro- uh, yeah, I mean, like, we've seen the same in music now. Like now we acknowledge that Nigerian music, music is, is like the best. It's like world yeah. class. You know, no one will ever tell you that, oh, listening to Nigerian music is not cool. And I think we need to see the same across many more industries. Many more industries. From like food to clothes food is to the, shoes. Food is the place where I think if it finally stays... We would have conquered that made in Nigeria yeah. thing, but um, it's it's still a, it's still a long way to go because I mean during the recession uh, we the saw recession was like we the saw thing we saw a lot said. of companies start to substitute you know uh, raw materials. We saw a lot of people start to move their um, uh, um, household f- intake from foreign products to. In fact, the entire cereal aisle yeah. of a lot of supermarkets went empty for a while. Then they said replacing it with Nigerian products. Even there's a uh, chocolate uh, flavored cereal. Which just disappeared, and then a Nigerian product that makes uh, cereal, as chocolate, also just filled the air. So at least now we know you like chocolate flavor cereal, so I can bring that for you tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah. I think that even for me, when I'm doing my household shopping now, I always make sure that I'm always checking the brands of things when I'm shopping. Like, oh, is this made in Nigeria? Mm-hmm. Because I'm trying, to, I'm being more aware that you know I want to include made in Nigeria brands in Into, my shopping. Yeah, true. It's not only because it's better for my shopping budget, but mm-hmm. I actually do really want to support made in Nigeria where possible. I know that the biggest complaint though that we hear about made in Nigeria is that it's still expensive. Too expensive. Yeah. And I, from like a manufacturer's point of view have a small inkling as to why because frankly it's expensive to produce in Nigeria Mm -hmm. Um, even though the government tries to ban certain sectors we haven't really seen that working as a way of bringing the price down especially Mm -hmm. when you're powering your own generator Mm -hmm. Um, if you have staff and you're running like a really um, a really technological focus in Mm -hmm. um, plant you still have to train people so you have to basically be like the both the educator the supplier thing social local products everything and it just makes like your product not be able to be competitively priced as a nigerian brand but i know the government usually typically tries to just ban things yeah and and, and i'm not sure it works i'm not sure banning works because i mean if you look at it from all the things we banned, we banned textile, we banned tomato paste, we banned rice, rice we banned, we unbanned, we rebanned, we re unbanned. I mean, it's, it's just the whole circle of banning and, you know, keep doing stuff that yeah. really, really upsets me. But it doesn't work. I mean, if you look at it, what we need is creating that skill, you know, that skill of economy so that uh, people who are manufacturing can manufacture at very cheap prices. Exactly. Then the products can be cheaper. Banning is not going to make the industry any easy to work with. Those are just great points. I think that, you know, like, it's really, we need to work on, the government needs to work with us to make uh, manufacturing here more mm-hmm. competitive. Like, for sure, banning doesn't work, especially because sometimes we locally are not even making enough of the product to feed, like, 180 million Nigerians. I mean, so seriously. what's the point of banning? It's, it's just, you're just going to create a scenario where people want to bring it in illegally. But anyways, let's go to the streets. Uh, what do you guys think about made in Nigeria products? Are you wearing? Are you eating? Are you driving made in are Nigeria? Are you listening to? Uh, yeah. Made in Nigeria. I'm made in Nigeria because people producing in Nigeria. Because if we say it, we should be taking and we be buying things from overseas and uh, always buy and imported and imported. It doesn't help us and it don't make our economy grow. Definitely, that, that's the best thing I can I can ever. I don't even like foreign things. I like made in Nigerian products. No, I cannot buy be, be, because because of corruption. The thing that anything that is made in, in Nigeria are not genuine. Yes, I will buy something made in Nigeria because I want to grow the Nigerian economy. I want to be also the part of the Nigeria and Nigerians that will grow the economy. I can't buy a car that is made in Nigeria. Nigeria and have fake products than they do. But clothes, I can still manage clothes. That is the only thing I can manage from Nigeria. Definitely, I will buy. I would buy a made in Nigeria thing. Well, because we are talking about, we've been preaching it that we, we that we should we should encourage and business grow in Nigeria. So if you want to encourage business to grow here in this country, in Nigeria, definitely you need to patronize what we have here. So definitely I will buy Nigerian thing, just like what I'm wearing. It's made here, so <laughs> I will do that. 
So I think it's clear to see that there's mixed opinions about this whole mm -hmm. Made in Nigeria mm -hmm. thing. I think everybody generally wants to support Made in Nigeria. We just want to be able to do so easily. Exactly. But I'm super excited about the businesses that I'm seeing like mm -hmm. coming out of this whole Made in mm -hmm. Nigeria mm -hmm. project. Like people who are really building world class brands. Like my favorite ice cream brand is a made in is made in Nigeria. My favorite fashion brand, of course, you already know, is made in Nigeria. And also some of like my music, my favorite musicians that I want to listen to is made in Nigeria. So I think that there's definitely it doesn't look like it's a fad. It looks like you know this thing might be here to stay this time. Um, yeah, not entirely sure. It, it depends. It depends. Um, in in some s sectors like uh, manufacturing, music, um, fashion. Um, uh, movies, I think it's here to stay. It will always be side by side with uh, foreign products, but I think uh, because it's easier to access, a lot of Nigerians will still use them. But in the area of, uh, con as in consumables, in terms of food, and I'm, I'm still a bit worried. No, I think in food, man, it really, because I mean, locally, I mean, because of the recession anyway, like mm -hmm. there are just some things, like if you were like, you know, the cost of everything went up, so we had to go back and start dreaming about our local food. I don't think that that's really going to go away. I don't think you're really going to see us become like a sushi eating nation, even though we, we like to be quite bougie sometimes. Yeah. But I think that I'm seeing that even the chefs that are coming up, like the food they're, they're infusing, yeah, they're, they're making they're contemporary Nigerian, Nigerian chefs food. Now. There's like Nigerian chefs who are doing stuff influenced by European um, trends as well. So I think that I'm so excited by seeing all the way that we're amalgamating like stuff that we have locally and making it like cool to do so. So I think that we have to continue to support. I know sometimes everyone says it's expensive, it's hard, it's not. But you know, there are great initiatives that we just have to keep supporting these brands. We're growing the local economy, we're helping the employment, we're helping the government get more taxes because we know they love that. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a whole, there's no really bad point for me about supporting Nigeria. I think I think my, my point is straight to the government. Um, the, the general context is power. I mean, if we yeah. can fix that area, it, it should. And I know everybody just says power and, and then the government looks back at you and says, you, you don't have a, a solution. And I've said it even before we privatize, let, why don't we liberalize the sector? Stop keeping everything on that grid. Let's just make it open so that everybody can create their own power and then, you know, make it available for everybody to use in the country. That way, her business and other businesses like hers can have cheaper power then prices will be able to come down. Yeah. And I have to say shout out salute to every Nigerian business who is building in spite of all the different challenges they were facing with no power, with no light, with no water. You. We're still going ahead and building these global world-class businesses because let's face it, the business not is not easy. going to build itself. It's not easy. It's going to have to happen naturally. I'm telling you. So my name is Honey Ogundei, and this has been another episode of Analyze This. If you want to discuss Made in Nigeria further, you can reach me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Honey Ogundei. And you can also reach me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Pinterest. Um, okay, I think I have more. But the same handle, Tunji Andrews, and then we can talk more. And as always, at Indani TV, using the hashtag Analyze This. Till next time, guys, have a great week.